Uh, my name is Jason Turner. Um, some of the projects that I've been working on, ChaiScript is my open source scripting language. CVP Best Practices is a forkable coding standards document hosted on GitHub if you want to play with that. And I am the co-host of CPP Cast in case you haven't heard about it at the conference yet today, or this week, um, which is a podcast for C++ developers. <clears throat> so IAFE is a common technique in the JavaScript world to create a new uh, variable scope. If I understand correctly, there's basically two scopes in JavaScript, which is the function scope and the global scope. So if you want your variables to not live in the global scope, you have to create a function. We don't really need that for C++, but I had been doing some JavaScript programming lately and just came to my mind <coughs> to see what if I could apply this to C++. But uh, we don't have function expressions in C++, so maybe this should be called illy. I don't immediately invoke lambda expressions. This is the, the gist of my entire talk here is this code has always annoyed me. <laughs> when I'm trying to figure out, I've got some variable that can have one of multiple values, and then I need to pass that to some other function. What is a good way to actually initialize pushback name in this case? So we just break all kinds of C++ best practices, uninitialized variables, uh, potentially expensive reassignment, particularly if this is potentially a, uh, a shared pointer or something else. And then we copy this value in and pushback name is left hanging around useless taking up space. So I'm thinking, just for a little bit of more background context I forgot to mention, I was looking at this code right after reading uh, Effective Modern C++. So I'm thinking, how can I reduce copies? How can I best take advantage of moves? That kind of thing. So I'm like, well, let's move it in. And there's, if anyone's paying attention, there's a fundamental problem with my first example here that I didn't really realize until yesterday. So if anyone notices that or thinks they know, might know what it is, you can point it out. So I figured, what if I move it? then we still have exactly the same problems. We're creating a initialized string, we're pushing, uh, we're reassigning it, and now we've even actually created an extra problem for ourselves. We have pushback name is now potentially left in an undefined state, and it could cause a crash later. So maybe we just go back to C++ 98. We create a function. This works. So we create a function, takes our boolean, returns the appropriate value. Uh, return value optimization solves any potential performance problems. We have no local variables, so we don't have to worry about moving something that we're going to use later or something taking up stack space. But this still kind of annoys me because I don't really like teeny tiny functions that have exactly one use. So uh, we could do a lambda which does actually um, solve all the same problems. It looks almost identical to creating a function. But then we kind of have this lambda lying around. I didn't love that answer either. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, Kidoke. Oh, bother. <laughs> Just a second, sorry. Interestingly, I don't know when I last saved that slide deck. And I don't know if I trust OpenOffice's recovery mechanism. So, I guess we'll try it. Where did, oops, wrong. Wow, this is great. There we go. And we 
car back to here. So, we, I, I, for all of these demo slides, I highlighted in yellow here the uh, lambda expression, the lambda that is being created, and then its call point. Because I know, as C++ developers, we're not really used to seeing code like this. JavaScript developers see it all, all the time. Uh, anyone here familiar with JavaScript? So, like a third of the room. <clears throat> so, this basic concept is we're creating the lambda. We are automatically capturing by reference all the values that might be necessary. We are returning back uh, the value that we want, and we are executing the lambda on the final line. <sighs> this uh, example is kind of weak. It, um, it's, it's doing something very small. It's kind of contrived, but it's a good example just to walk through what I was thinking. This is the more complete example, which is, uh, you can download the slide deck from the conference website and get the URLs here that I initially came up with <coughs> that uh, was vetted by a bunch of people on Reddit who weighed in about what kind of performance implications we had. But with this example um, uh, ver of trying to create some complex object that takes multiple steps and has a bunch of stuff being added to it, like we're creating this vector and I was looking for a string that wouldn't fit inside the small string optimization so that we know that we're doing lots of dynamic allocations and we want to try to reduce copies as much as possible. We get uh, this example of creating some number of vectors using our lambda call to add them to return value and then pushing that back out. And this, uh, it's just a matter of point here, it performs basically exactly the same or maybe slightly better than creating a function that does this and calling the function. But we, I recommend that you get the slide deck and get those URLs and look at that. So uh, when I first started discussing this with other people, uh, they, they pointed out there's a lot more that you can do with this than just trying to optimize your code. There's code correctness implications. Take this example, which is straight from something that I do in TypeScript, where I'm trying to determine the size of an integer constant inside a script. So I am initializing it with what was my default case, then checking to see if it's one of these two other options and reassigning it. I don't like this, so I should be const. And not like it really matters for integers, but there's a reassignment here. So we can make size const and again use an immediately invoked lambda to uh, solve that problem, have slightly more correct code. And in my opinion, it makes the intent of our size variable more clear now because we see it only being assigned in one place. And I wanted to make a quick note about uh, type deduction, return type deduction, if you go to use this technique. And if you're using GCC 4.6 specifically and have pedantic turned on, it does not like lambdas that have more than one statement in them. So it'll give you this little cannot deduce the return type, which is slightly annoying considering how simple that is. But So then, another note about return type deduction. We, I, I was making this example, trying to figure out exactly um, what, uh, what we could use this technique to optimize to various uh, situations. So does anyone know, if we execute main, what the output will be in this case? Basically, I'm asking how many copies and how many, how many uh, constructions we'll get. So we are capturing by reference this O and then immediately returning it back out to a const reference by auto. What's that? You get a copy. You do get a copy. You get the construction, a copy, and then two destructions. That's not terribly helpful. So why does this matter? Or actually, here's the solution, is you have to specify uh, that you want it to return a const reference if that's your goal in this case. Why this matters here 
is I was looking for a way to be able to select, I've got one of two possible values here that this ID name string might be. And I couldn't use the technique of immediately invoking it like I was referring to earlier because I actually need the value in two different places. I have ID name here and in the case that there's an error I need to tell the user what the error was. So we can use this technique to use a um, to basically select what object we want at runtime and uh, not make any copies at all, just store a reference to it. I'd like to talk about readability too because there's some potentially pretty big problems depending on uh, how many of these lambdas that you want to start calling in your, uh, your list of parameters. So this again is actual real world example from code that I was optimizing uh, a few weeks ago. I have boxed value, which in this case uh, dynamically allocates memory as a shared pointer, and then I am reassigning it. So it's like the worst case example of what I've been trying to, to optimize in my code base. So I started here by having a move, so that's at least something. I'm not um, copying the shared pointer wrapped boxed value. So uh, better is to use our immediately invoked lambda and completely avoid the construction and reassignment here with just a simple uh, uh, return value optimization. But I left the move in place in this one. Instead of moving it into the argument list like that, which, uh, you know, it's a decision you have to make if you start playing with this technique. Like, is this readable anymore? I don't know. Depends on how you're used to seeing, how, how used you are to looking at it. I didn't find it readable enough in my code. So another option would be this, where we create the lambda that does the return that we want and then just call the lambda. But now we're breaking at least um, some best practices and effective modern C++ Scott says to not default capture by reference because of the potential for holding on to references to values that pop off the stack. So it's another option. Really, I'm just throwing these options out here. Uh, it's, if anyone has any opinion on any of them. Then I thought, well, you know, all of these things, really when it comes down to it, the examples that I've shown you, come down to really fancy ternary expressions. So is this more or less readable than this, where you're putting the lambda inside the function call? argument list. I, I don't find this readable at all, so I'm pretty much completely avoiding ternaries at this point now that I'm using this technique throughout my code. So this is uh, that real example that I uh, showed a few slides back where I was initializing the uh, size of, well, it's related to that example. I'm initializing the variable s with a default value, then reinitializing it with something that I that I actually want it to be if I need to, or using the lambda and invoking it all at once. Oh, do you have a question? Oh, sorry. Um, this is what I found. The code that has the reassignment is slightly shorter, but it has two branches in the code. The code that doesn't do the reassignment only has one branch. And in practice, what I noticed as I was using this and avoiding things like reassignment and avoiding more copies uh, and then running through um, Volgrind with cash, the cache grind tool, I was noticing uh, more cache hits, basically, by avoiding branching. Couple notes about when not to use it. When constructing an object that is passed to const reference, it, it doesn't really gain you anything because the point is to move it into place where you need it, which 
if anyone was wondering, is the problem with the very first example. So I'm actually passing that to something that's const reference, so I'm not really gaining anything there. Or when it impedes readability, we walked through some of those problems. When code size increases dramatically, as I was playing with this, I saw in some cases where I'm creating these lambdas inside of templated functions, the compiler didn't like it, code size was exploding in some cases. And I've also seen cases where playing with this actually made performance worse, and I'm not entirely sure why yet. Uh, I'm guessing because the compiler wasn't inlining things as well as it might have been able to otherwise. And let's see, this is a pretty quick note about optimization. I was trying to see, just trying to feel out what the compiler does with, um, you know, <coughs> i equals i plus one can be simplified to an increment of i, or i plus equals one can be simplified to an increment of i, i equals i times two can be simplified to a left shift of one, so what does the compiler do here? Anyone want to make any comments? Yeah, a compiler completely throws away your code. So uh, don't assume you know what the compiler is doing is my takeaway from that. I had to keep just running through, uh, I say here, gcc.godbolt.org. If you haven't seen that website, you can like type in code live and it'll compile it as you're typing it in and show you the results. <coughs> So best practices don't apply. If you're using it so that you're creating the lambda and executing at the same time, again, referencing uh, effective C++, effective modern C++, it doesn't matter if we automatically capture by reference here because we're completely throwing away the lambda next. We don't have any risk at all of holding on to a reference of something that's going to be popped from the stack. And using that, in some cases, resulted in smaller and faster code than specifying the parameters that you wanted it to capture or capturing them. It was certainly by capturing them by copy, no question, or by, uh, by putting them on the list of arguments for the lambda. But if you end up using this code and you go to refactor it later, remember to reapply your best practices so you don't get yourself stuck. Then I started thinking C++ is really expressive now, so what else can we do? Maybe this would be a solution to what people want for um, being able to get the index during a, um, a ranged for loop. Uh, I've seen there's a discussion on Stack Overflow about this. Someone got like 75% of the solution done. I don't know if there's anything in the next language proposal that the committee is discussing for that. Or maybe we can borrow something like times from Ruby and make a little times function that just iterates over your lambda, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I've already, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect when I came to the conference, but since getting here, I've seen already in every talk, someone is mentioning, well, in Haskell, we do this. So why not use the technique from Haskell? And uh, so people are already thinking along these lines. And those are conclusions. Never assume you know what the compiler is doing. Make sure you profile. See what other techniques we can borrow. Any other questions? Yes? Um, is the ability to actually invoke a lambda during its declaration, is that a 14 feature? Nope. That since it's worked on every single compiler I've tried from GCC 4.6 to C Visual Studio 2013. Nothing cares. I, I, I put the parentheses at the end of the lambda and I said, um, I wonder if this is going to compile. Because I had never seen anyone try it before. Or I had never seen anyone do it and I had never tried it. And it had absolutely no problem with it at all. Yes? So in terms of your list when not to apply this, I, I, I love the examples. Yes. So I, I saw this and I said, I know exactly where, where I want to apply this in my code base. And I started thinking about that and, and in that code base there are there are chains where it does early returns. Okay. And so 
if you if you have a place where you've got code where you're doing early <coughs> returns and you try to capture that early return inside of the lambda, this is not going to work. So the question was, if you have code or the comment, if you have code that is doing early returns and you try to capture the early return inside of a lambda, would this work? It won't work. It won't work. Okay. I'm just it, saying it, that's it, one of the things you could add. Oh, okay. I have to, th I ne feel like I need an example of what you were envisioning to, because I know what you're saying, returning from the middle, but yeah. I can, I, we can talk afterwards if you're curious. Yes. Okay. But, you know, if, there, are, there are plenty of folks who say don't have early returns in, in files. Ah, bah. And I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with them. Do, yes. You know, because you're working with someone else's code base or because you don't have that policy, then those are the returns. If they're captured inside the lambda, they're only going to, each return only returns to one level. Right. Okay. So if you have an early return, then each return would only be captured through one level of the lambda. You wouldn't be able to capture it back out. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? All right. All done. Thank you.